Brock Lesnar hauled up the entire ring with a tractor as Becky Lynch transformed her face and Ronda Rousey altered her heel turn. Be sure to stick to the end as we recap what happened at SummerSlam with facts you may not have known. First up, in what seemed like a poetic addressing of the wrongs of McMahon's final year, Lynch defeated Bianca Belair for the women's title in just 27 seconds at last year's Summerfest, which the fans didn't buy into. Lynch made a comeback as a heel. In actuality, the main event featured a different type of battle after a fantastic back-and-forth contest. The dynamics have been just right adjusted by Triple H, somehow uniting them against the resurfacing and making debut new group of Bayley, Io Shirai, and Dakota Kai while simultaneously giving Bel Air a nice, solid victory and turning Becky Lynch babyface. Becky repeatedly used the same movements in a wonderful match setup, but each time Belair would have been accustomed to them. Bianca responded with a second rope Spanish fly into the KOD to win when she went for her second man slap. Becky then shook Belair's hand and hugged her without turning. Despite her angry expression, when the music started, Bailey triumphantly returned from her injuries while sporting pants that were more leg than a pocket. She ended up needing all those compartments for all her new friends, including Dakota Kai, who was released back in April and was the first of the Triple H regime's ruthless WWE cuts to be brought back, raising the possibility that he might try to do the same for others who escaped, and Io Shirai, who is widely believed to be heading back to Japan due to her contract expiring soon and the lack of any creative plans in place. Following the plan and the appearance of Bailey's and her allies, Becky remained at Bel Air's side as they faced off against Team B.I.K., or whatever their name would be. Because of the management overhaul, there is currently such goodwill toward WWE that the fans supported Logan Paul in his matchup with The Miz. He is a fantastic athlete who not only hits outstanding high spots but also works excellently stiffly and correctly places his blows and kicks on King of Soft style Miz, which helps. Paul won the match with a flawless frog splash through the announcer's desk outside, and AJ Styles pursued Tommaso Ciampa away from the ring, hopefully setting up a tantalizing conflict between the two on Night Raw. Before we continue with the rest of the SummerSlam 2022 update, we want to let you know that Triple H has been appointed as the head of the WWE's creative media following the retirement of Vince McMahon, who previously oversaw everything. We anticipate changes in the WWE creative team now that Triple H is in charge. Now let's get right back into SummerSlam 2022. In Bobby Lashley vs. Theory, an odd event happened. The fight itself served more as a story device. Theory touched Lashley in less than five minutes to preserve himself for a potential cash-in later on. Bobby had a fantastic appearance. In another match, we saw Judgment Day and the Mysterios strangely hold off on using weapons and interfering. The interactions between Rey and Baylor were fantastic, but when Rhea Ripley got involved and it looked like the heels would triumph, Edge returned from a massive stairway that was pulsing with flames. Even though Baylor easily might have earned a three count despite the two mile hike up the ramp, Edge assisted the Mysterios in winning in the babyface role, and Dominic has yet to become a heel. An Edge vs. Baylor singles rivalry may develop out of this, and we are pleased for Edge that he departed due to creative differences, refusing to participate in any activities, and that he has now returned as a vampire. While Pat McAfee is the ideal sports entertainer, Logan Paul is likely a better professional wrestler. The deeper emotion and obvious heel-face dynamics in play throughout his encounter with Happy Corbin made it one of the night's highlights. From the beginning, when McAfee cut off Corbin's entrance with a male chorus singing Dumbass Corbin, to the backflips, hurricanes, and swanton bomb that he somehow managed to strike despite almost falling backwards. Following some low-blow retaliation against Corbin, McAfee won. Next, the Street Profits vs. The Usos Money in the Bank bout, which was a contender for WWE Match of the Year, set a high bar for their subsequent match. And with only little more than half the time as their previous battle, they were never really given the chance to match it. Instead, the drama centered on Montez Ford's mounting irritability. After his frog splash, he could have won it, 
but he wasted too much time recovering before making the pin. Before the next match began, Riddle charged into the ring and demanded to fight Seth Rollins. Get your ass out here! With numerous officials attempting to stop him, Seth stormed out and stomped an injured Riddle. Say that Rollins injured the guy. That's why there's not a match at SummerSlam. The WWE officials were suddenly perceived as a cohesive babyface presence rather than the erratic heel swarm they typically are, thanks to this incredibly good angle. The shortest match of the night was when Liv Morgan pinned Ronda Rousey in just 4 minutes and 50 seconds as the program went on. On paper, that appears to be a very solid booking for Morgan. In actuality, it was likely the program's lone mistake. Morgan was subordinated by Ronda, whose kayfabe displaced her shoulder. Later, she latched on to an armbar, but Morgan defeated her by placing her shoulders on the mat. It wasn't great, but it wasn't particularly fantastic either. Because Ronda later turned heel, after that, she kind of attacked Liv and then assaulted the referee. Now to the main event. Brock Lesnar rode down in a tractor, and he introduced the match from a digger, which made the start of Roman Reigns vs. Brock Lesnar immensely impressive. He then leapt off of it to start the fight, punching Reigns mercilessly. Lesnar lifted one corner of the ring with the digger while Reigns was inside the ring, sending Roman humorously toppling outside as he did so. It did nothing to Reigns in terms of physical harm. The weird offspring of the Lesnar vs. Big Show ring collapse angle and Stone Cold's beer truck, this was an all-time great pro wrestling visual in terms of sheer spectacle, and it will go down in history with both of them. They appear to have broken the wrestling. In the end, every factor worked against Lesnar. The attempt by Theory to cash in his briefcase was never approved. A table was pushed through Heyman. Brock was figuratively crushed under rubble by the Usos and Reigns won last man standing. Trying to figure out why Reigns won, Drew McIntyre is the reason why we have the solution. The championship match between Drew McIntyre and Roman Reigns will take place at the WWE Stadium event Clash at the Castle on September 3rd in the United Kingdom. But if Roman Reigns had lost, Brock Lesnar would have faced Drew. However, WWE management thought that Roman vs. Drew was the main attraction. They wanted to guarantee that the stadium was sold out, and they think that Roman vs. Drew was the match that fans most eagerly anticipated. Therefore, that is why they have now formally booked, and that is why Roman Reigns was able to prevail in the bout. Some fans have complained that it's unjust because the only reason Roman won is so they can have the largest match possible for the Clash at the Castle pay-per-view. They think WWE would have instead concentrated on giving this pay-per-view event a great conclusion by having Brock win the title and Theory profit. However, the WWE anticipates a fantastic pay-per-view in the upcoming Clash at the Castle in September. Roman Reigns is also seen as essentially the new Rock and the new Hulk Hogan, and they want to keep the titles on him because of how much he is boosting interest in WWE. As of now, Roman Reigns is still the undisputed WWE Universal Champion, and it appears that he will remain so for a while. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.